everybody's here. Hello, hello, hello. A lovely Saturday afternoon is here with us here in the UK and of course on the program The Community and the Law. We're live on BW TV, we're live on BW Radio. Well, if I look through my window, I see that it's raining. It's a wet Saturday afternoon here in the UK. What about you? Whatever it is, we have the warmth from within that would help us go through the two hours that we have in front of us where we're going to learn so many things, answer our questions and of course get to have an interaction with BWF solicitors. The question I'm asking you today is, did you know that you can request to vary the terms of your employment contract if your circumstances have changed? Well. If you didn't know, I'm going to tell you something real good to learn and something real good to keep in your arsenal so you know what to do at your workplace. Then again, if you have any legal question, if you have any issue uh, bothering your mind, you can come on the program when the phone lines are active. And uh, my guest, lawyer Charles Asma from BWF Solicitors will be answering them. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, this is the community and the law. My name is Ousu Sufipo. Let's all jump into it together. Hello, 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 brothers, sisters, uncles, um, aunties, friends, and everyone on board. This is BWTV. This is BW Radio. We're live on BWF Solicitors Facebook page, and we're live on BWF Solicitors YouTube page, on LinkedIn and all the social media platforms. It's uh, the second time in the year 2023 that we're coming your way with the a uh, program that helps the community understand what the laws are, what they say, and how we can deal with all those. My name is Uriku Ogusu Frimpon. I'm hosting this program today, and we come in your way courtesy BWF Solicitors. BWF Solicitors are legal partners when it comes to the law here in the community. And what they do for us is they have the, the room, the door, and of course the, uh, the space for you to uh, bring in your legal questions, legal issues, 
uh, they will help you with your applications. They will help you with understanding the law, both uh, here in the UK and back home in Ghana or all the other jurisdictions that they're operating. They have lovely, wonderful uh, legal personalities that will help you understand everything you need to understand. And by their courtesy, we're coming your way with this legal education program spanning between now and six o'clock here in the UK. Once again, my name is Ousu Frimpon, and my guest today is um, my, um, I would say my regular Saturday pal. Uh, my learned friend and a lawyer from BWF Solicitors, lawyer Charles Asma, is right here with me and he's going to help me deal with the question I posed earlier on. Now, if you are employed in any organization and your circumstances change, would you be able to ask for a variation in the employment contract you have. Now, first of all, I will go to the basics and ask, what's an employment contract? Who uh, are the parties to any employment contract? And would anybody have the right to change it anytime, anyhow, anywhere? Well, we'll be looking at that. But before then, let's say thank you to BWF Solicitors by going through the art and they will tell you what they do. This is our world. Here we are in our community. There are the laws. There are the regulations. We have BWF solicitors. BWF solicitors, experts in all aspects of the law, family law, civil litigation, all immigration and nationality issues, representation in court, marriage and divorce. We pride ourselves to give you excellent legal services and follow through till we'll get you the right results and decisions. That is our mutual satisfaction. We have a team of excellent qualified solicitors and support team to help you every step of the way. Our senior partner with over 30 years of unbroken service to the community is a member of the Family Law Panel and has advised several lawyers and institutions in many legal matters. He is qualified to practice both in the UK and in Ghana. Come to us. Speak to us. Let us represent you. We are your trusted community partners when it comes to the law. Locate us on the fourth floor of the Anna House, 214 218 High Road at Seven Sisters in North London, N15 4NP, nearest train station, Victoria Line to Seven Sisters Station, exit number two. We are open for all consultations from Monday to Friday, 9 30 a.m. to 6 p.m., weekends by appointment only. Call us now on 0208 493 7340 or 077-127-61884. BWF Solicitors, your trusted legal partner. Well, um, thank you very much, BWF Solicitors. We know you are our trusted partners when it comes to the law. And uh, this afternoon, we're so privileged again to have you uh, in our midst again, teaching the community and, of course, providing us with all the opportunities to understand what the laws say and what new situations we can find ourselves in. Now, today I'm going to take you through uh, a few examples, so let them get, let's get them out of the way. Now, the very first one I'm going to look at is a situation where um, at the beginning of the year, when uh, the beginning of the week, so to speak, when BW uh, brings out our nuggets. So let's see what they threw at us today. Now, foreign divorce obtained without the court's involvement outside England and Wales is not valid in the UK uh, if one of the parties was habitually resident in the UK or has lived in the UK for 12 months or more or domiciled here. The, this provision applies to divorces obtained under customary law 
in Ghana. Now, this is quoted from Section 462 FLA 1986. In the case uh, that is Bergovitz uh, versus Greenberg, the Attorney General intervening 1996 case, um, the FSC, uh, FCR 587 foreign divorce. Now, if you live in the UK and um, probably you have a partner in Ghana or outside of the UK and you want to divorce, what do you do? Or you married in the, um, you married outside of the UK and you would want to uh, have a divorce here in the UK. What are the principles about it? What does the law say? The, this provision, according to what we have on the screen, applies to divorces obtained under customary law in Ghana. Quite confusing, so many things brought together here and there and the rest of it. Now, as part of my introduction, I will be asking uh, the lawyer to look at that for me. But before then, let me also uh, say to you that if you want to apply for um, a visitor's visa and want to do it correctly and right, you need to contact BWF Solicitors. BWF Solicitors, they are on the fourth floor of the Anna House, 214 218 Tottenham High Road in North London, N154NP. Call them 0208 493 7340, 0208 493 7340, or the emergency number 077 127 61884. 077 127 61884. Okay, now um, I think uh, to get things going and get all those things out of the way, let me um, bring on Lawyer Charles Asma. And I ask what the nugget is all about, the foreign divorce. Now, somebody, unfortunately, may have to uh, terminate the uh, marriage contractual agreement. And uh, you're doing it. What, what, what makes one a foreign one? What makes one a local one? Whatever it is. Well, just as my, uh, good afternoon once again. Thank you. Good afternoon, Black Coco. How, How are, are you? you? Yeah, great. How are you too? Uh, yeah, well, very well. Um, by God's grace, another Saturday has come to meet us, and we're still alive. Um, by His grace, we, we're doing very well. Um, quickly, let me ask this, that um, we don't expect that whatever it is, the situation will go bad. Mm -hmm. Because people get into marriage, and it's about love, it's about um, procreation, creating a family, and enjoying life. But it gets to a point where it has to go bad and the two parties will go their separate ways. But the law, the law, I know because of the seriousness of divorce, the bitterness that people express for each other and some of the consequences, the law has to regulate divorce. But we are here following divorce. Is there a difference between what is foreign and what is local? What is divorce in itself? Thank you um, very much. Yes, yeah, so um, viewers and listeners, um, once again, um, good afternoon. Um, we are discussing a very important um, nugget uh, point. And the point is, if you are married, um, per the customs of your country or land, mm -hmm. and you wish to terminate the marital agreement, how do you do it? And is it always acceptable in the UK in terms of how you go about it? First off, marriage is between two people mm -hmm. with a blessing of the families. So we can say between two families. Okay. Once the families agree, there is... Is, it, is that a universal principle? That of course, marriage is between two people mm -hmm. who have understanding that they come together to live each other's life forever, so to okay. speak. Right. And with that, per, uh, families are involved. Okay. So um, every country has its own customary laws that regulates marriage. And the case in point is that of um, Ghana. So Ghanaian customary marriage laws are quite clear that the marriage um, is uh, put together between the two families. Okay. And once the families have agreed and the parties are happy with that, there is marriage. Okay. All the rituals come together, there is marriage. What it means is that once that marriage is performed, 
any other documentary evidence that you wish to have to support that marriage that has already taken place at home through the families, you go to the government body responsible for registering, acknowledging the marriage, and that's okay. the registration. Right. So in Ghana, for, for instance, um, you go through the registration under the Customary Marriages Act. Um, so we have the it's an old law, 1885 law, and we also have an Cap 127 law, the Ordinance Marriage. Either way, the families have agreed you register your marriage. Once the marriage is registered, there is partnership. Okay. To break the partnership means both parties must consent to that separation. Okay. Otherwise, it will be easy for anybody to just wake up and say, that's the end of it. Mm. Then that will not be fair on at, at the other party. Right. So the position in UK under Section 46 of the um, Family Law Act is that you have to go through the court process. Okay. So that both parties are aware. And so that if one of them want to contest, then they will contest. And if the court says so, that will be it. Now, let's take it that because it is customarily, the families have agreed that the marriage cannot continue to um, exist because of some factors that have made the breakdown of the relationship irretrievable okay and the families have agreed that we have to exchange the diaries have been exchanged but we have to return those diaries okay. and whatever was given to seal the relationship or the marriage the families will say so and so be it that there is separation however it will be easy for any family member to support the other family member to mm. say that you know what get out of it let the other person go his or her way. So it has to go through the court process. Okay. Going through the court process means you have to make application to court so that the other party can respond if they have to. If they, do, if they agree to it, then smooth process. If they don't agree to it, then it has to be contested until the court pronounces that. What it means is that if the family agree that the marriage should be over and you go to a local council or assembly, for them to give you a letter to confirm that that is not the type of di divorce or separation or dissolution that is allowed. Okay. Now, we are looking at this with, in terms of those who need that evidence to support their immigration application. Okay. Right. So somebody is married, they are divorced. It was okay, if you are married before, you should have divorced before you can marry again. So they go, go get a letter from the local assembly and they say, this is my divorce. Now the position has changed. The position is that if one of the parties is living in the UK, habitual, the, the word is habitual residence. residence. What it means is that you are living in the UK 12 months or more, then you are ordinarily living, resident in the UK. You are not just a visitor in and so out. In that, in, the, in that case, if you are habitually resident in the UK or ordinarily living here or domiciled here, the laws that apply here are the laws that you have to use to dissolve the marriage. To dissolve the marriage. Okay. So the position is that if you are living here and you say that your marriage that took place in your country has been dissolved, then they expect you to go through the process that is enshrined in the UK law, okay. which is the section 46 that we talked about. There's also case law provision. The case that we refer to, there's also a local case, which is uh, the case of um, Boche and Abrifa. These are Ghanaian partners okay. who took their issue to court, and the court concluded that, uh, this is 2021 judgment, that a, if, the, if one party is habitually resident in the UK or domiciled, so domiciled would be somebody who has um, sexual status or citizenship. Habitual resident, you may have two and a half or limited leave to remain but all your life you live here so 12 months plus you are living in the uk okay. and we say you are habitually resident in this case you have to follow through the law so can, can there be any situation where um there is a, a full court process say back in ghana to dissolve the marriage even though habitually one of the partners may be living outside of ghana and for example in the uk 
can't they accept that that the the laws in Ghana they have gone through the process properly and a judge has pronounced it. That is what the law is requesting. Okay. That is the whole essence of this nugget. Mm -hmm. That you cannot just go and get a letter from a local assembly to say that the marriage has been dissolved at home and this is the evidence of dissolution. It mm -hmm. has to go through court process. Okay. The nugget position doesn't say that it has to be in UK court. It says it has to go through court process. Okay. So it can take place in your original home country or it can take place in your second home country, which is the UK, mm -hmm. because one of the parties is habitually resident. resident in the so you can get the divorce done in the UK. Mm -hmm. Or you can also get it done in Ghana. Either way, you know in the UK, you cannot just get divorce uh, accepted by just going to the local assembly council to get a letter that this is, or something to show that it's, no, you have to go through the court process. And that is what they expect to happen wherever the divorce is taking place or coming from. Okay. Well, brothers and sisters, folks, um, Lighthouse like Osma has been gracious to explain the detail to us. Now, what the Luggage says, uh, it's about uh, foreign divorce, and it says that foreign divorce obtained without the court's involvement outside England and Wales is not valid in the UK. If one of the parties was habitually resident in the UK or has lived in the UK for 12 months or more or domiciled here, the provision also applies to divorces obtained under customary law. Um, slash, um, for instance, in Ghana, Section 46 to FLA 1986. And I remember uh, Leia also mentioning a case in 2021 between two Ghanaians, and that confirms that as well. Um, another thing that um, Leia has come up, and I would want you to uh, quickly look at that for us, it's um, there is news that uh, people can get um, faster decision on visa or settlement application. What's happening? Yes, um, we uh, thank you very much for graciously sharing this. I'm sure viewers can see. Mm -hmm. And if you follow the link, it will tell you that um, from the 9th of um, January 2021, what used to be called fast track has come back. Okay. In that, if you want it fast tracked, of course, now we have the premium service that people have been accessing, within a day you get your decision, provided you have the purchasing power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not about affordability. <laughs> but it's good, because right. you are looking at cost and benefit. Okay. Trading 800 pounds different for... 800 pounds? Yeah, yeah so that's, that's, quite, that's quite a lot. So that's if you want it the next day, 800 pounds. Imagine you are paying 800 pounds. And it's going to save you the hell or the trauma or the inconvenience of having to wait for one or more years. Mm. Which one is better? Anyway. Exactly. You need it to be able to. So by the end of, so if you are getting it the next day and you are paying 800, you've got it within one week. The rest of the period, let's say one year, a year's time, which is 52 weeks, you realize that you can work and recoup your 800 pounds, can't you? Well, so that, that is the good side, and that mm -hmm. is how I want people to understand. It's not always the cost, but also the benefit The benefit thereof. of it. So okay. what the government is saying is that if you are making an application, settlement application um, in the UK or outside the UK, of course, the cost structure as we have is the ones that are made, applications made in the UK. Mm -hmm. So you are making an application in the UK with your families or, with, or yourself. Mm -hmm. We have two options. Either you go for medium time or the super time. The super time decision is made within 24 hours, okay. the next working day, after you've done your biometric. That means as okay. soon as you finish your biometric, decision is decision follows. There are instances where you can even use the ID app so that you don't even have to go and do biometric at all. Okay. But either way, you get your decision as soon as possible. So you pay 800 pounds. The other one, if you want it a little cheaper, you pay 500 pounds for each application, and that decision is to be made within five working days. Okay. So if you made the application on Monday, by the next um, week Monday, five working days, you have your decision. Okay. And that's quite helpful. Now, what the 
policy change is also saying is that if you are doing it with family members, you have to be mindful that you cannot share a pick. Mm -hmm. So that you can say that there are five of us, I, my partner, and three kids. And therefore, uh, mine is an emergency, but the kids are not too serious. So I will take, um, it, I will pay 800 for the next day, and the rest will pay, the, go for the standard <laughs> one, and some of them will go, no. It has to be uniform. Okay. So you cannot pick and choose. Once we decide that one of them needs to be prioritized, then all of you must be prioritized. That's one bit. What it means is that if there are five of you, that will be plus 800 pounds each. If I say plus, what it means is that you have your standard fee that you pay mm -hmm. plus the premium, the premium fee, fee of either 800 pounds or 500 pounds, depending on which option you go for. And this applies to settlement applications in the UK, um, applies to student visa applications in the UK, skilled worker applications in the UK, and so many other applications that can be found once we follow, follow the link on the okay. screen. Right, so the link is www.gov.uk forward slash faster dash decision dash visa dash settlement www.gov.uk forward slash faster dash decision dash visa dash settlement uh, i know um sandra has graciously put the link in the chat so um those of you on the chat and on the platform you can pick that and uh, uh make use of that and well as i said um, I don't make any excuses when it comes to BWF solicitors because they provide us with very up-to-date and on-point information. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, now I'm coming I, I back to I might also add that there is yes, also provision for those who are making applications, settlement applications or skilled work applications or student applications from abroad mm -hmm. that you can also opt for priority. Sometimes it's not available, but oftentimes it's also available. Um, that you pay extra two fifty pounds to get a priority, which is um, decision is made within a week. Okay, and that is for those who need to enter as soon as possible from abroad, and they cannot wait for a standard decision time. Okay, well, those of you who have come online, let me acknowledge you, Sandra Fraser. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, that kind of support. You're doing so very well. Henry Vlad Norte, thank you. Henry Vlad Norte, you are here with us. Aquaba, you say. Um, we have PAAM TV UK. Uh, Pastor Augustine, thank you very much. Um, I believe we're live on your platform as well. Thank you for spreading the news. Um, next, we have uh, Sandra Fraser is here. Uh, Antobam is on board. Rebecca Mwako. Uh, Kenneth Kofi, Furibuateng, that's am I, and I'm talking about. William Adolfo, we have Mehdi Rihodoy. Nana Poku Ajma, you're watching. Odesheba Nana Kweku Meye Dede, you are also on board. Uh, Bless Sink, you also watching. Perpetual, Perpetual, you have a question. I will pick it up later on. Uh, you're talking about applying for um, a spousal visa in Ghana, and you want to find out a few things about that. We'll be looking at that very soon. Yvonne also and Sa, um, bless you. Thank you very much. Uh, Tex Christine, thank you. Kirsten Diaz, very queer minta. Uh, Mahmoud Akua, Charles Asma. Is it the Charles Asma I have on the platform? <laughs> okay, so um, Francis Bokufofi, Smith Mercy. Um, somebody says, Minsuma Landio. Yes, Mercy, I see you too. Uh, thank you very much. Now, when you come on board, do two quick things for me. One, like the page. Two, pick up the, uh, the, the, the link and share in your network. Then again, maybe a third one, uh, subscribe to the channel and let us grow it together. Now, today we, David Koshi, you are here. Thank you very much. Um, Sandra Fraser says, contact um, specialist immigration lawyers and solicitors for assistance and all the numbers are there. BWF solicitors, fourth floor, Anna House, 214 to 218, Tottenham High Road, Seven Sisters, North London, N15 4NP. Call them 0208 493 
0707-127-6184. Now, today my question is a very interesting one. What I am asking, lawyer, or I'm, I'm asking you, and with that, I'm inviting you to join the conversation. Your text number 07950 or when the lines are active and I ask you to call 0208-123-1016, 0208-123-1016. I didn't say call now, so don't, don't do it now. Or you can call the mobile Okay, we're back and um, I'm going straight into the discussion. I'm asking, um, what is an employment contract? What, what parties are there in there? And the question I, I have been asked is, that did I know that I could request to vary the terms of my employment contract when my circumstances change? Well, what's an employment contract? Thank you very much. So um, we have... Um case law definition and also the statutory definition. The statutory in point is the Employment Rights Act 1996, and it's a UK law. Mm -hmm. There are also um, case law um, views. Now, so to speak, under Section 230 of the Employment Rights Act 1996, um, employment, is, employment is mainly a service and it's a form of contract between two parties. Mm -hmm. where one accept to provide, in other words, one accept to serve the other party and the other party accept to provide jobs or service for the other party to do. And this is a simple way I will put it because I don't want to be too legalistic. Mm. Now... Um, We're a lawyer, so we can excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so employment contract then comes into... Uh, comes in, in, in when there is this agreement between the person who accepts and the person who offers. Mm -hmm. So there's offer and acceptance. One offers a service and the other accepts the service. Okay. And the service can be permanently or temporarily. Okay. Now, these days we have a range of categories of um, people who qualify as employees. So if you go under 230 that we refer to, we have a um, definition of that who an employee is. Okay. And also we have other people such as workers, agency staff, and so on and so forth. But we are putting all together as employees. Now if an employee, you have the employer agreeing to do something for you and you are agreeing to perform something for the employer. Mm -hmm. That employment contract has to be um, validated by way of written agreement. So under section one of the Employment Rights Act 1996, there must be what we call terms and conditions mm -hmm. or terms of the agreement or the contract. So you have that. So the question here is, at what point in time can I seek to mm -hmm. vary this agreement? Because ordinarily, once you enter into agreement, the terms must subsist. Now, um, let, let, me, let me look at it before we go into the, the variation of the terms. A contract should have a start and an end, doesn't it? So if I 
get employed? Do they, do, does the employer have to give me a number of years that I can work at that position and in that employer? So the agreement or the contract will specify the duration of that agreement. So as I said, it can be permanent. That means you don't have any definite ending. Mm -hmm. If it is temporary, then there is definite ending. So at the end of that definite period, the contract is over. Of course, subject to renewal. But if it's not to be renewed, then we say the contract is over. So you can go for one-year contract, two-year contract, short-term contract, whatever it is. You know that it will end at a point because the contract will say so. Okay. If the contract doesn't give you definite end period, then it's permanent. And it will specify that this is a permanent contract. Somebody is here sent in a very interesting question. I was just looking at that. And it says, sometimes they say zero hour contract. Um, what is that? Does it have an end or a start? <laughs> right. So a zero hour contract means that, so the, the, the word is there. Mm -hmm. Hour. Hour. So where the hour is not qualified, then we know that we are looking at the standard hours of 37 a week or whatever a week. But the moment you have zero hour contract, what we are saying is that your, you don't have specific time or number of hours that we expect you to work every week. Okay. Such that if that hour is not provided for you to perform, the employer will be at fault. Okay. Yours is zero. Mm -hmm. So at any point in time, you expect to work zero hours. Where we need you, we'll call you to come and do more than zero hours. Oh, so the, the, the big... But zero is not absolute. But zero is zero. Zero is a number. Okay. Yeah, zero is a number. So in this case, you are working zero hours. So your contract is zero hours. So you don't expect the employer to compulsorily offer you a, a hours as would have been if it wasn't a zero-hour contract. So when, when I have a zero-hour contract, I can refuse to work? Well, I mean, I suppose you would want to work. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more in favor of the employer than mm -hmm. the employee. So you have a zero-hour contract and you, at any point in time, the employer will ask you if you, there's the job available. And I'm sure you, if you every day will be asking, is there a job if for there's me? Any more is there a job for me? In the rest but of and, and if you are needed, you can do more than even the 37 hours. But once there's no work. So per, per, per this, the understanding could be that if I have a zero hour contract, then I'm not restricted to working 37.5 hours or 35 hours or whatever. I could do any number provided there's work available. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah, I'd rather go for a zero hour contract. Well, <laughs> depending on your circumstances, isn't it? So people go for a zero hour contract, right. but sometimes zero hour contract is flexible. Okay. Um, depending on the nature of the service. Um, sometimes some of these services are seasonal, so you do so much and at a point nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. But at least you have contract with the employer that when there is availability, you will be first to be considered. Okay. Now, what, what goes into any employment contract? Um, I'm asking because we will be moving to the point where uh, we're thinking of varying uh, the, the terms of the contract when my circumstances change. Mm -hmm. What typically goes into an employment contract? Okay, so thank you very much. So if we look at um, Section 1 of the Employment Rights Act 1996, um, talking about um, terms of the agreement or terms of the contract, you are looking at the parties involved. So A and X or A and B, X and Y, let me put mm -hmm. that way, X and Y. So X is the employer, Y is the employee. So the names are clear. Okay. We know who is involved. Mm -hmm. We also have the place that the service is to be provided mm -hmm. or work to be performed. So let's call it the workplace. Okay. So the employer will specify the workplace and the employee or the will-be employee will accept to perform the service from that workplace. Mm -hmm. We also have the duration of that service, as I said, speci a specific period or permanent period. We also have the time the employee ought to start work. Okay. We also have the hours the employee ought to work. We also have, we've already mentioned the place. 
then we have the wage or the remuneration okay. that ought to go with that service. Mm -hmm. We also have um, other things that the employee ought to know and follow, what we call code of conduct. Okay. There will be policies in place that the employee ought to follow. Um, so any other thing that is clearly specified will be the primary contract or primary terms. Then there will be secondary terms. But the key thing within the primary terms is um, are such that they ought to be provided before the employee start or the first day the employee has started work. Okay. So when, when my employment contract is laid before me, I should be looking for where to work, the times that I need to work for um, the uh, benefits I will get from it. Um, how many hours? How many hours? I'm expected to work a week. Okay. And, and also a day. Okay. The break and the holiday leave, all those things. Okay, so holidays and all the other benefits that come with it. Yes. Um, would you be um, me providing the service or the part going to the employee of that person? Would I be or would I have the opportunity of telling the employer that I want X, Y, Z instead of what you have put in there before I even start? I suppose you need work and you have um, examined yourself that you fit what has been laid before you. Mm -hmm. You at apply for the job based on the job description. You've been interviewed and you accept. You think through and you sign the contract. At that point, it is what you have accepted. Mm -hmm. However, things change. And that is what we are looking at. What happens after some time your circumstance has changed? Can you request to vary it? Obviously, when we talk about circumstances, we're talking about some physical circumstances. But um, things like where I live, um, my health conditions, or even economic conditions can all change. What should change before I can request for a change like that, if it so happens? So here we are looking at um, moving from fixed or rigid working pattern to a mm -hmm. flexible working pattern. Okay. So, um, section 80, G, or F, H, I, is where we are going to base our discussion on. But the first part, or the first point is looking at section 80, F of the Employment Right Act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is where it says that where the person's circumstance has changed, the person will have the right to request to vary the contract, the terms of the contract. And here, I don't think anybody would want to request to vary their pay downward. No, no. And the employer no, would not no, accept ne never. upward. <laughs> so there would, no, there would be no contemplation to vary the pay. So, that is, so the benefits may not necessarily be varied. But you seek to vary the duties and how you play out the duty. So let's say your duty is to work um, 37 or 40 hours a week. And for some... Um, family reasons, personal reasons, career reasons, educational reasons, some other reasons, you cannot cope with that um, 37 and a half hours a week or 37 hours a week or 40 hours a week. So you tell your employer that my circumstances have changed and therefore I will not be able to do this number of hours a week. Then you have to, then, then you have to um, rely on Section 80F to start the process. Mm -hmm. Or... You are doing full time, okay. five days a week, mm -hmm. Monday to Friday. For whatever reason, you cannot do Monday to Friday. So you have to make a request under Section 80F to the employer that for these reasons, I cannot do five days a week. Then, so you are varying the um, scope of your work okay. pattern. Right. Or... Obviously, there are instances, so we are not talking about place, because mm -hmm. place may be so fixed that you cannot seek to vary the place. You cannot choose where you want to work. The employer will make a suggestion to you that we are moving you from here to that, but that is also a variation. In that case, it's up to you. 
to in accept the, it. based on the discussions with the employer to take it from there. But we are looking at few or uh, one or two things, hours, days, and um, also um, so hours, hours and actually days. Mm. Okay, so um, the unfortunate um, happening of COVID made so many things change. Now, somebody who was asked to self-isolate and well, all went on lockdown, uh, people or some organizations are faced, um, they're coming into, back into offices in, into certain new arrangements of working. Now, if for instance, I am apprehensive of getting into uh, a large crowd in an office area, can I request that because of the COVID circumstance, things have changed on my part, so I would want to work from home all the time. Would that be an acceptable something? So that is one of the variations that you can seek to make to the employer. Mm -hmm. So um, under the provision that we are looking at, um, it says that the first thing you can ask for is the hours required to work. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at the times when the person is required to work. So how many days a week? and the hours, how many hours a week, and also where between his home and the place of business of his employer he's required to work. So imagine the employer has many um, working places or um, points. Mm -hmm. As part of the variation, you can make a request to say that instead of, because of my circumstance, instead of working at point Z, I would wish to be considered for point B. That's also, then you are varying your contract because your original contract might have stated that the place of work will be point Z. Let's say your place of work will be Liverpool Street and there is a new office at, uh, let's say, Stratford. You can request for your contract to be varied so that you will be working at this place instead of the original place. Okay. Now, the other question I would want to pose is um, if I ask for a variation, can it be a temporary something where uh, if another circumstance or even the same circumstance that has changed that has warranted me to ask for the variation, if it changes back to the previous one, can I still ask for a variation? Or if I ask for one variation, it has to be a permanent or a long-term something? So the law doesn't spell out how long that should be. Mm -hmm. So we apply business and uh, what we call commercial um, sense to assess whether if you take um, flexible work pattern, it should be permanent or it should be up to a point. And again, we get to a point where even the application for variation ought to be considered by the employer. An employer will have to make a decision based on certain factors. Mm -hmm. So it's not a case of you make application and that's it. The employer says no, and you are taking the employer to court. No. So, but the point is that if you make application, you have to specify how long that variation should be. Okay. And what sort of variation you are seeking. Some people will go for, let's say, one year. Mm -hmm. Some people will go for a specific period. Some may say, I want it forever. So the contract will change completely to reflect that. Mm -hmm. Now, once you do that, can you come back and make another variation? The law says you can request to vary. What it means is that you can request to vary whenever you need to request to vary. It doesn't tell you that you can request to vary once, twice, or... There's does, no does, a, does a law provide any situation where the employer can say no? The employer, so that's why I said that the employer will have a duty to make assessment of your request mm -hmm. and conclude based on informed factors that your application will be accepted or not. And the duty um, under a, um, section 80G is for the employer to make a holistic assessment. And I'm going to take um, viewers through some of the things the law requires the employer to consider. So that when the employer considers those things, you cannot, as an employee, say that, oh, the employer has not been fair, for example. 
So if we go to um, G, and this is very important. Okay. The law says that um, to refuse the application or to grant the application, the employer must take into consideration certain factors. What are? The factors will be the burden of additional cost. Okay. Burden of additional cost. So if you are not there, there's likely to be additional cost because your extra work might be uh, covered permanently or temporarily by somebody else. So that's additional cost. Mm -hmm. Somebody will say, but if the person is not there, they are losing anyway. So why can't that fraction be given to the new person? But that new person will also go through training and um, 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 statutory duties on the employer in terms of NI, national insurance and pensions and so on and so forth. So the person, first person is there, second person is there doing the same job because half-half. But in terms of pension and all that, it will not be half-half because they are both working. So mm -hmm. their rights ought to be respected. So the employer will consider the burden in terms of cost on the business. Again, detriment effect on the ability to meet customer demand, so business needs. Mm -hmm. If this is granted, will it affect our ability to meet customer needs or demand? If that is going to be the case, then it is likely that the employer will make an exception to that. Again, inability to reorganize work among existing staff. So if the employer is not able to reorganize the work among existing staff, then request for variation of flexible work may not be granted. granted. Okay. Again, uh, detriment impact on quality. So if you are not there, somebody will have to cover your bit. And if that's going to affect quality, then the employer may uh, be skeptical about granting your request. Again, we are looking at insufficiency of work during the period the employee proposes to work. So let's say you work um, uh, five days a week, weekday, mm -hmm. and you now propose to work weekend. Okay. If there's no job for weekend, the employer will decline the application. Okay. So when you are making your application as an employee, you have to factor in these possibilities and preempt, because the law requires you to also say how you expect the employee employer to meet these things. Okay. So yes, you've made the application, but you also point it out to the employer that I'm aware that this will bring or this will have impact on business. Therefore, these are my proposals to mitigate that effect. Okay. Then, so here, what you are doing is to support the employer to say yes, because you have the employer to cover their duties. So you may make a suggestion, you may do this, you may do that, but the employer is the one who has to make the assessment and grant or not to grant. Lawyer, when anybody is entering into um, any contractual situation, the conditions around it are spelled out. Um, I'm going to employ you. I expect you to do X, Y, Z. You are expected to receive X, Y, Z also from me for providing your service. Now, these conditions that you have outlined were um, the rights of the employee um, to have the variation made when circumstances change. Are they supposed to be included in the employment contract that I will sign? No. So there is statutory right and the employment right. So mm -hmm. the employment rights are, uh, if, if I say employment right, I'm talking about the contractual rights. Mm -hmm. The contract is there, X, Y, Z are stated. That's all you need. Okay. However, there is also law that supports the enforcement of that agreement. Right. So the agreement is not um, performed in vacuum. It's performed within the remit of the law. That is why, even though we don't say that you can go flexible, there will be policies in place based on what the law says that there should be flexibility. Mm -hmm. So the employer will have to have a flexible work, working policy telling you how to go about it within the remit of the law. Okay. The employer will have 
policy telling you how, if you want, for example, to terminate your agreement or end your agreement contract, how to go about it. Of course, the contract will spell out notice period, but there's also a policy that will um, call out how the steps to follow if you want to do this or you want to do that. So the contract wouldn't say the law says you can do this, so do it. Of course, if the law says, then you know what the law what says, says, and therefore it's your right that you can accept. Okay. So then, um, generally, for the ordinary person, um, what we can be assured of is that if my circumstances change, I can go to my employer and ask for a variation of my contract. Yes. And the employer has to go through and check these criteria and see if it is possible to vary that. Yes. If, if it doesn't happen. What do I do? What are my remedial steps? Right. I mean, um, if, if it doesn't... So the, the position of the law is that the employer has to make the assessment and respond within three months from the date of that request. Request, okay. And the response ought to be reasonable. Mm -hmm. That is where your, the, your next step will determine whether it is reasonable or not reasonable. Mm -hmm. So let's say the employer says that we cannot grant it and there's no reason. Then that's not reasonable. Okay. If the employer says we cannot grant it because losing you for two days will affect business because you play a vital role and we cannot guarantee that the person coming on board will be able to meet the quality standards expected. You can say train them and let them do it. But it becomes a case of maybe we won't grant it now, we'll defer it on. Mm -hmm. But it's also a case of, um, there are also instances where the employer can d um, delay or yeah, delay the response per agreement with the employee. So the employer can say that, all right, um, ordinarily we have to make a decision in three months, but in your application or with this particular application, we cannot decide in three months. So let's give ourselves, say, six months to be able to look at completely. We are considering X, Y, Z to fall in place so that we can make informed decision on your application. That's also required under the law. So the employer can ask for extension of time to make that decision. So you can't say three months and therefore they have to decide in three months. But if the all else is done and the employer has not been able to agree without any reasonable um, justification, then the employee can take action. Okay. We'll come back to the action that could be taken. But um, ladies and gentlemen, Laura Charles Asma from BWF Solicitors is taking us through uh, what we can do when our circumstances change and we have a contract of employment that we would want to have varied. Yes, you have the right to ask for the variation. The employer has the right to look at certain situations and conditions and agree or disagree to your request. Um, your questions and concerns are um, invited now. You can text 0795042278. 0795042278. Or you can call in 0208-1231016. Remember, we're coming your way at see BWF Solicitors. 214218 Tottenham High Road, Seven Sisters, fourth floor of the Anna House. Now, if you're driving, your postcode is N154 NP. Or if you're going via public transport, um, you go via train, uh, Victoria Line, Seven Sisters Station, use exit number two. Exit number two takes you to the doorstep of Anna House. Go to the fourth floor, they are there Monday to Friday between 9 30 in the morning and 6 p.m. in the evening. If you have any emergency and you want to call 077-127-61884, 077-127-61884. BWF solicitors are trusted legal partners when it comes to the law. Now, well, finally, before I allow anybody um, from outside the studio to join us, let me ask, for instance, if I am fully able to, to do anything, but due to an unforeseen circumstance, an accident, something has happened, and I'm disabled one way or the other, I'm still able to perform my duties, but I need some adjustments made for my access to the workplace and the rest of it. Is the employer 
obliged to heed to my request. Or they can say that we are not financially in a position to be able to vary our working conditions for you, so we are laying you off. If my employer says so, are they right? They are wrong. Because the employer has a statutory duty in two breaths. First breath is that there is duty under a Quality Act to 2010 to meet the needs of um, people who are disabled. Mm -hmm. So that, that is there. You have to provide equal opportunity for them to meet expectation. Okay. And again, we come to the second breath under Employment Rights Act 1996. Mm -hmm. You have to make reasonable adjustment when the circumstance of the employee changes. changes. Okay. So if the person is disabled, then you have to make reasonable adjustment for them to perform. If the person is pregnant, you have to make reasonable adjustment for them to perform. If the person is going through any form of um, change, then you have to make reasonable adjustment. But from the specific question you asked, if there's disability, it even increases the threshold of duty for the employer because mm. you have to make it easy for the employ employee. And you cannot just say that they can't perform. If they can't perform, it means you cannot perform your job. It provides us with a very difficult situation because, for instance, if I don't have enough funds to vary my workplace, what do I do as an employer? It's not a case of if. It's a statutory obligation to make reasonable adjustment for mm. that employee whose situation has changed to the effect that without that adjustment, they cannot perform reasonably. Okay. So let's say an employer um, has back injury. Then you have to make reasonable adjustment in terms of seating. Mm -hmm. If you have to change the seat, you have to change the seat. I hope my seat is comfortable. This is comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you have to change the seat. Right. Um, these days, because of IT systems, even the screen, you've got to make reasonable <coughs> adjustment to the screen so that it doesn't affect in terms yeah, of training, right. making room, uh, employee, even the employee knows. But it is also a duty of the employee to ensure that in terms of compliance with their own duty, these are in place. Um, again, if it's a case of somebody who is disabled, especially they were not disabled and now they are disabled, in terms of to the, to the effect that they have to use wheelchair, for example, what do you do? This, uh, this is where I agree with you that it can be very contentious because mm -hmm. imagine um, we were working on, the, let's say, we have, we, uh, we, it's, it's, a, it's a story building and let's say we are on a, fa a first floor mm -hmm. and this employee was able to move without any issue. There's no lift. And all of a sudden, they can't. Then, two options, <laughs> isn't it? You can't create lift, but mm -hmm. you still have to make sure that they perform. It means you have to find a way to move them to another place. If it's a case of getting a place for them ground floor so that they will not injure themselves further getting to where they are. So some of these things can be very difficult for the employer in terms of cost, but uh, it's a matter of uh, cost and compliance, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, will you so have an you choose, excuse? You choose between the devil and the deep blue sea. Exactly. Right. So th that is the reasonable adjustment um, threshold for employers. Mm, okay. Well, um, somebody's asking for the text number uh, 07 950 422 780. 07 950 422 780. Uh, Teleduma, um, Dorcas, Gurav Singh, MD Rakib, uh, Diana Sapon, Naomi Buami. Uh, you asked for the text number, I think, uh, provided, and uh, my studio director has graciously put it on the screen for us. Um, there's a question from Covenant Grace. Uh, let me see if we can uh, pick that one up. Um, what are the differences between the following services? Um, premium service, priority service, 
super priority service. Uh, which service is for which application? Example, premium services are for the visit uh, uh, visa, work permit, indefinite or naturalization. Priority services are for spouse, visa extension and the like. Please educate us which service is for which application. It's about how much you can afford. Okay. So, for example, under the skilled worker provision, there are three layers. Mm -hmm. First layer is standard, and that costs you £247. Right. Second layer, they call it priority, and that costs you £747. The third layer, they call it super priority, and they, it, that will cost you £1,047. So the, 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 the jargons and the names and expressions are all, so all are, marketing tools. Yeah, so this is the pricing name. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go on to uh, the phone line 07399208468 or 0208-1231016. We have somebody on the line. Um, hello. Hello. Good evening, Chris. Good evening, boss. Um, how are you? I'm Lawyer Asma. Very well, thank you. Good, good. Um, I have a pending question that... Um, um, it doesn't relate to employment law, though. So, is it possible to ask that question? Yeah, yeah please go ahead. Yes, go ahead, please. Oh, okay. Um, my question is um, on visas, um, visas application. Um, applying visit, for visit visa, right? Yes, yes. please. Okay. So, um, my current understanding is um, there is no legal basis to appeal or do administrative right. However, if you feel um, the EC um, decision is not, um, it's based on an error, can you make a further application between maybe a day or two while the decision is out to, to explain yourself again for the same purpose? Yes. So that's the right thing to do. As to when to make another application, it's entirely um, the applicant's call. You can apply the next day you received your decision, or you can wait and regroup before you make another application. But it's always a good practice that you address the so-called concern that they raised in the refusal decision and address that in your next application. You know, um, even though you are not going to add a letter, if you are doing your own application, there's always opportunity to say more because there's a box called additional information. And additional information is not there for, in, um, for, for, for Just fun. for the sake of it, yeah. It is there so that if you have point to raise, to buttress the information you have already provided, this is where to put it. Mm. So you can do that using the additional information box to explain yourself. You can also add a letter um, to address the point raised. However, you see, visitors' applications are trash, uh, discretionary applications. Okay. So that a caseworker will make a decision based on what they think you will do when you arrive in the UK. If they think that you will not return, they will say you have not met the returnability test. If they think that you will return, they will say, yes, go and come. So, unfortunately, there's no strict criteria like other visas where you tick all the boxes and you know you are there. With visit visa, you are visiting the person and it says, don't come yet. Mm. <laughs> you see, th th that is what it is. But if everything is on point, it can prove that when you come or go, you will return to continue life where you were. Then oftentimes, they will grant it. Right. Thank okay. you so much. All right. Thank you, too. Um, I think we have one text from Perpetual on the platform. Let's pick that one up. Uh, good evening, lawyer. Is it true that uh, anyone applying for a spousal visa in Ghana has to provide Ghana police report? Applying for what visa? A spousal visa. Well, you know, there are different spousal visas. Um, uh, students can apply. Mm -hmm. based on, as dependent student, spouse. Mm -hmm. Skilled workers do and all that. The essence of the um, police report is to help you to make a case for the job you are coming to do. Mm 
Okay. There are people, if, for example, I, I am a breast surgeon or a settled person and I'm inviting my spouse to join me, my spouse doesn't have to do police clearance. Okay. Um, or obtain police report because my spouse wouldn't need it for anything. Okay. But if my spouse is coming here to perform a particular job, that requires that their criminal background is assessed. I mean, not criminal background. Their background is assessed for criminal activity. Mm -hmm. Then they will need that report. So I would say it depends on what the pers the spousal application is for, and whether the person will need, let's call it DBS from abroad at this stage. Okay. Well, um, one from Mame Dakua. Mame Dakua says that I have a friend who is in Austria and wants to come to the UK to work since UK is no more in the EU. How can she get her national insurance number when she comes to the UK? The question maybe should be, can she come to the UK to work? Then do we take up her national insurance number? But because um, as our friend Riley pointed out, there's Brexit. Mm -hmm. since 31st December 2020. Mm -hmm. So after that, you cannot come in to work. You can only come as a visitor and return. Okay. So our friend in Austria who wants to come to the UK cannot come based on EU rights. Mm -hmm. Unless they were here before, and of course they've already been granted, then it's a case of returning. In this case, they would have already obtained an NI. So the person cannot come and work, and therefore they wouldn't be issued with an NI. Okay. 073992 Yes, lawyer, you wanted to ask So, uh, I mean, um, unless, of course, the person has a spouse in the UK mm -hmm. um, who is um, a relevant national, EU national. In, in other words, the person came before the deadline and has been granted either pre-settled or settled, and they want to invite that spouse Mm -hmm. then, or if this person is a child, that child, then of course, when that person comes, they will need NI. So it depends on how they are coming and whether they will require NI. Okay. If they will require NI, then they make application for NI once they come. All right. 073-992-08468 or text 7850 We have somebody on the line. Hello. Hello. Good, Good evening, boss. What do you say? I'm a friend of Kofi. Kofi? Kofi, I'm a friend of Kofi. Kofi, I'm a friend Section uh, 84 of the Immigration Act. Mm -hmm. And I am a ticket number one, one, say, me, me, but no, I need a JJ, you say, man, 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 sign, declaration, you are also a messiah. Now, say, me, can be presenting me, I'm a senior lawyer, but me, I'm not going to take a broken baby, and see, I'm going to be a man from this court. And maybe I have to say, I'm the rep. From from the courts, tribunal first, tribunal maybe after in Nigeria. I mean, I mean, I'm representing. No, no, but but I'm not like we could do judge judge. No, or say no. Now they are over between our makers. And see, I mean, you are not also makers. No, we we are so we know who we are. Or say it's a consent with the judge to him. And see, or make it that 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 right that that's important. Now, man, so man, 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 see, I say, man, see, we start with that. No, I said, I meant to me represent me as my rep, I brought maybe the good uh minion and I represent him. You do want to know. The court the cost is written on the deal or miss me or miss me do as a rep. Yeah, also. Yeah, that was a repatriate the same. Hey yo, give me your announcer. Repatriate me where? And uh, okay. and the also sign a section 84 form. No, yes, I'm not taking you say the first one. Okay, well, into first one, what's he saying? Form that we have 
Well, it might be that mm -hmm. um, you misinterpreted point na a war a hono because usually people can represent we have what we call um, legal friend or McKenzie friend, and um, but technicality no a war form no so. Even if you are a lawyer, now we call now one present and prepare form ye the one sign the one for my judge now the judge will not allow you to speak. Because it's a statutory provision. Say, as I said, we yes, I dare no answer. I'm a wanker, sir. 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 I'm Na the different directions, me say, me me some far documents. No bond on a excess money. Now now, you you never say what can I have? You 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 man of five years or excess no. I'm record will be. Now I'm some far come a whole home of his whole home of his body be. I have to say, you know, 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 I represent it, Minya Bana. I'm sorry, I want to make it court date, but I don't understand the Yeah, and see, near court, you know, Adrian said, when you're a lawyer, so you cannot represent Nipawe at a tribunal on some matter we are home. And they can't, Nipana, or your application, me boy, appeal on one or your idea. I mean, I'm here. Well, it's on your idea, and I am here. Eh, 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 Mr. Tadia. Yeah, you must have done one Even though you are one or you are not there. lawyer, dear, me boy. Yeah. On one or you are not there. call court. No, so one for barrister, dear, uncle, me boy. Yeah, for barrister, dear, uncle. Uh So, um, uh, good thing is said. Judge, you know, uncle said no to you, but he will go ahead and hear the matter. We are not going to adjourn the case, you know. My direction said, send all the document. Now, the document is not encoded. No, not encoded. I see. I almost put it in. I almost put Yes. And it's a home office for sale. I need document evidence. No, I'm going to swear to you. There's no way a judge will no, be go ahead. And then number two, it's going to be two. One. The rep was being debated in your case, you know, meboa. And the home office was also yeah. a document, you know, in the, either way, you know, not judging as a cell, or to a sum no eshada. Now, case management, you know, I want now may decide this cell, Oma allow you to rep your sister, and now I say, Omo ma will to represent your sister. I said, many war, and car, in Primpriano, a mequa couple. Lawyer, sir, we need to be. We just have to know what to ask him. Lawyer, no, they make application to court. Say we now represent this client. Then all the documents will go. If you cry, no, the lawyer will review the evidence to see. Say, I've been here so I'm going to be a can't want because the law was still allowed. Now, lawyer, no, I fail it, sir. A brand new one. Barrister, no, lawyer, no, be fine, no. I'll be completely form eighty four, no, section eighty four, form, no. Quite straightforward, sir. I'm represented as a barrister from these chambers, yeah. and yeah. I was instructed by this law firm to represent this client. We no one doing cancer assembly now because you don't have that um, acquaintance. But what does he say? I'm a lawyer. Who are who are they? Now, sir, who pay me? Ah, who are who are they? I'm a fan of the lawyer. I'm from the family. I didn't get to ask that, Mr. Ramu. We take it over. Who are? I 
Yes, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a we, we can do um, Zoom or telephone consultation. Thank you. Thank you. It's No, no problem. Number no, one, uh, it will be on the screen. The message was so as well. Why? You, Brittany. Why? All right. Thank you very much. Um, over to me, Alfred. You can call in. Bye. Zero. Two zero eight one two three one zero one six or zero seven three nine nine two zero eight four six eight. Um, I have uh, Grace Press. Grace Press, um, you put this comment on YouTube. I say I came into um, the country on twentieth March twenty eighteen on pre-settled visa. Can I apply for my settlement in February this year? So 19, 20, 21, 22. So one, two, three, four, five. Yes, so we did five years. Um, I suppose the pre settled crown is ending. So mm. your pre settled is actually expiring. So you've got to renew by extending it, and that will be your next, your final application, sexual status. Okay. Um, when you say good afternoon, my question, um, I, I know you wanted to say question. But you said quotation. My question is, I have a British child. Her passport has expired. I did so three years ago. Would it have any effect on her? Also, I have two children. I brought them from Ghana through their dad as he is married to an EU. But they are no longer in a relationship. And he has permanent stay last year. But he said he will not put in an application for the children. Is there anything I can do? What about him, herself? What does she have? Um, we don't know. No. Why, 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 why? We, we, I don't think. Yeah. See, I have a British passport, and my British card has expired, that expired three years ago. Would it affect any? Um, the, the expired one is for the child, isn't it? Say her, yeah. her child's passport is expired. Expired, yes. Well, if the child's passport is expired, what it means is that the child cannot travel without renewing the passport. Mm, okay. And if the child needs the passport for anything, and it's expired, they will ask the child to renew the passport before they can use it. So it's better that the passport is renewed. Okay. Because they don't, uh, she doesn't know what will be needed, um, with, uh, what she will need a passport for um, as she goes along. Now, the second the is, question says, um, the second question, I have two children, brought them from, uh, uh, yes. from Ghana, yes. through their dad, as he's married, through, um, married to an EU national, but they are no longer in a relationship. And he has his permanent, he had his permanent stay last year. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he means. But he said he will not put in the application for the children. Is there anything I can do? So um, let's assume that she's living with the kids. I don't know who lives with the children. But the kids, the children came in and the sponsor, the sponsor was the EU person. Mm -hmm. And as we said, uh, discussed the last time, there has been an intervening factor divorce because mm -hmm. if she said they are no longer there mm -hmm. uh, presumption is that they are divorced, divorced. okay if there was divorce then there should be evidence of divorce divorce certificate, certificate right. if there is divorce certificate the children will add it to the application that there has been intervening factor and continue to extend their yes, leave okay. if the father were to be willing to help the father has indefinite leave to remain then the children can depend on the father to make an application for registration. But unfortunately, um, due to whatever is going on, they have to find another way to deal with this. Okay. 0739920868. Hello? 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 Good evening. Oh, good evening, sir. Mm. 
your computer your tv volume is interrupting if you could either go away from that or just mute it so we can hear you from the phone. Why? So I'm better. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, two, uh, three years, any 11 years old. But me two years, no, uh, three years, no, sorry. Or your uh, child, special needs child. And see me explaining my almost there. Um, changing tonight, and we were child care issues and duties. Now, I said, me, yeah, after father. okay, and I mean, me, yeah, mixed shift, you know, mean to me, and yeah, because uh, and I mean, beside me, previous management, uh, for a full time, uh, as a night shift only, no, but my cousin, and I'll say on the ass here, and the SM in your way, but I see me in your meeting, be meeting, I have a you know, or see me here with a union, maybe I'm a union, but. Um, or see a bay together, but or no echo any or muko ye or no co ye and then I'll move or no quan or buy an overcatch and say or more decide to say or more a call a baby for uh, which is 20, uh, 20 miles away from me. And I'm your explanation, um, say may call a juma way not mean to me and but I'm being Colano and Cosco, a bacco school, no, a bear fat And I'm driving on the M1 to a bacco way no sooner. It's a, it's a risk, mommy. She say you are seeing me tonight. Now I mean train, but on the on my ready for meeting. And I'm present, Mister. Said I didn't chance, and I'm a war. Okay. Yo, is he on the on the yeah, line? Yeah, he's on the call. Director, it is saying. Hello, sorry. Director, ha, it is saying. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Lawyer. Good. She say now what if you know I'm not your car. Bachelor, that's yeah. good. That's what I wanted to know. So that's refreshing. So wait for them. If they are not paying you, then I would have looked at what you can do. But so wait for them. If it's going to take one year for them to come back, let them pay you and wait. Omuba Omaka said, yes, we have reconsidered. Fine. Or they will say, no, we are where we are. So Omaka said, you call what we call ACAS. ACAS is the mm -hmm. body that um, intervenes on behalf of employees and employers. We fry ACAS, now I can send you in our ACAS will advise you, but they cannot force the employer to do otherwise or do what they wouldn't want to mm -hmm. do. Don't worry, just make sure that you are following through the process. After ACAS, still I know my young person because you have already applied for flexible hours to meet what we call family um, work-life balance. And in your case, you have a good reason, the needs of your disabled child. They gave you that flexibility. Then another um, uh, manager or um, uh, a decision is made to change that, isn't it? But all right. But on the new manager, I'm gonna say, I'll say uh, the previous manager, no? when, when my man signed a baby, she just said it uh, verbally. And see when new manager and see uh, say mean trebi via express say we are authorizing for my permanent loan. Now me me the email be extra and say me my administrator no care and now or only me pass and now or me. And see for the past uh, since June 2021, my permanent. This year I'm about and not at all. Okay, 
I'm saying, I'm going to use technicality against you, sir. Then I just say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, Okay, I don't know what you have, uh, uh, yeah, evidence, uh, sir, sir, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, but either way, no, uh, it is what it is. Into the chain, I'm going to investigate, and I'm going to make a decision. However long you have taken the chain, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, fine, and I say, still no. I'm going to say, no, still, uh, for acres, na ka chire won say 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 na e koso na ka we circumstance e chire won they will have a word with the employer the employer na still our case dey be a let them do whatever they want to do they will have two options either say on be terminate you completely and now say on be force wa ma wa wa resign so mo force wa na wa wo resign here we call it constructive dismissal so, or more unforeseen, but or more country say, you know, you know, you may be able to confide there. That would be unfair dismissal. How long have you worked with them? But your March in the two years. March we here two years. But your hand. Into potentially no. So, if we pass the time now, we may take a decision to dismiss you. No, is. So, if we wait the two years there, then you have the right not to be unfairly dismissed. Because um, in, in Rane say before we be to me, any answer there no. I just say why you juma two years. But you watch as here. Until your bomb pile say we be by March. I didn't be delay up to April. Then what cover with two years? Then either way, no, you can take action. Say either wrongful dismissal, unfair dismissal, or constructive dismissal. But what I would advise you to do is say be be say no. Even though it's easy to fight it alone, or sometimes it's better to seek the backing of a lawyer. Why? Ah, uh, but your um union, um union, eh, 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 you just ma wong from the same. What's it? But your um your union rep and the union, no, eh, 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 you just ma wong. Now that it's a union, no, we come meet, no, mama, mama, my friend, my uncle, be. No, but your a manager, no. Ena orange meeting, no. But ono kachere say me and me union rep will be informed. But ono ena koye ono kwa koye meeting no back door. Okay. Ono koye ono ni meeting. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, don't worry. Probably means say or 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 mention say oni union rep no. Ebe from to meeting. Yeah. But one free one mo. Ena ono koye meeting no with top management. Maybe. Okay, so, so that's fine. You let's leave it. But you have to make sure say who Sanya wo kan nyina no wo story no wo ho. Date na ade nyina e ho kama. Why? Na say we make the decision no say dey be a eh hopefully e be after match. Say in could do match dey a e be a bit tricky because we not chat 2 years yet. But after match dey a na we chat 2 years. Santi you can assert your right. E wo emra kwan so say o ma dismiss so unfairly. And I said, so why not resign in Swa? You can say, say, or more for so, I'm not resigning. And that is constructive dismissal. Why? No, I'm telling you, I have to wait till March. Do you, well, March is in your own interest. Okay, yeah. Because, you can say, we need two years, so you So you don't have right under the law to fight anything. Okay. But the good thing okay. is that they have not concluded. They have not made a decision to say go home, to terminate him. Mm -hmm. And see, if they make the decision after March, then he would have had the employment for two years. Then under Section 108, he has become a qualifying employee because he has worked with them for at least two years. Why? Okay. Okay, my father, I'm going to show you the baby. And see, the baby, I want to be able to move for semi semi for about 20 miles away from me. And see, me to me, I accept it. Now, me, in case I almost say, because me to normally say, I'll be able to do it soon. I'll be able to do it before March. And see, me to me, I call her, Kakra, now me, I drew March, you know, I qualify for win and I still. But, but, so, I'm going to say, call. Now we That means we accept it. Say we call twenty miles away. What is here? Mm -hmm. So you cannot turn around and say say, baby. 
Si si enu a wo feel say emwa wo no, then you say say emwa me because of nyenti a me de kwaje change no eh yes say say say. And say me go 20 miles away, how do I take care of the disabled child no? Why? Yeah. Uh -huh. But okay. I'd rather say, um, sorry, but you miss spending with him. Um, I'll see. Main draw letter. Main Koji in Kualano School. A letter for in Kualano say I'm pa say me the Wamuga me the in Kualano School School. Makwa Koji. I'll see me for medical way no msumba na me nshere me the amano. But in Krofobi, well, other people were hard. They only have to tell them, say, oh, we child care. And one or not, oh, they have accepted a woman. A woman so a woman, so a woman mixed in a woman body in the area. I want to mean that. They have accepted them. But for some reason, I mean, it's a woman, a woman, a woman, a So if you say, son, I'm going to go to the then you can, over to me, a woman, a woman, so, because then that would be discrimination under the law. Because mm -hmm. we, you will be a friend of comparators. Some in Panua work on us, and we are the same employee. We are employees. So be there, ye are a team. Now are a genus. Now we are a team. 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 Then there is, they are being unfavorable towards you. What is here? Some are here that you can bring action against them. But either way, you, know, right. you have to make sure it's a way the two years. Okay. Thank you, friend. Thank well, you. thank you to God bless you. Thank you for having time to uh, be with us on the program. Um, <clears throat> lawyer, um, the one that brought in the issue of um, her children having come through and that says the children have been, um, it says, the children, I have two and a half through my child and she spent seven and a half years on that so he has another renewal to do on the 10-year route uh, the children have lived with her since they came through the one that said has two children that was brought in yeah, but so this person has two children one under uh, immigration rules or mm -hmm. because of a yeah, british child mm -hmm. with a british passport which is expired though the other one is and that uh, i think it's it, eu um provision two kids came from abroad, they have maybe currently on pre-settled, thinking about how they become settled and issues have arisen. How do they get around it? She's now saying that she has, um, seven, she's now in her seventh year mm -hmm. on the 10 year road, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Now which of the two, I'm sure she obtained that based on the child, the British child, the one whose passport is expired. I suppose uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I suppose so. So, for herself, it's just go and renew the child's passport. Use it to renew your visa when your time comes. Straightforward. Because this is a child that she's been using, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Not using, per se. She's been depending on to make her application. So if the application is expired, or it's about to, the, the leave is about to expire, mm -hmm. she has to renew. Maybe she wants to switch to the... You, you children. I think I think I should be giving this uh, person uh, a reward because as you you explain, she comes in with further explanation. She okay. says yes, um, being the child is a British and she acquired hair status on Through the that. Yes. So it's straightforward. Renew straightforward. the passport. Go renew the passport um, and uh, continue your application when it expires. What 20, last twenty eight days to the expiry of the application of your leave. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I extend. Naomi, it's straightforward. Please go do it and uh, you'll be fine. Okay, another one. Uh, <clears throat> Mawena Koku says, how do I get my immigration history data uh, from the home office? I'm always asked to put in a UK postcode when filling one form on their website. You make an application for your... Okay, so it's called subject access request. Mm -hmm. You apply for them to give you the information they hold about you. Mm -hmm. It's a f standard form, so you complete it, just like completing any other application, application to the home form. office. Okay. And provide all the information they've asked for. There are two of them, standard and um, comprehensive. So you ask for the comprehensive one. The comprehensive will give you a lot of information 
as opposed to the standard, which is quite uh, brief or mm. summary. All right. Um, this one says, lawyer, I'm submitting application for indefinitely to remain uh, um, five years partner route. Okay. I meet the financial threshold of 18,600. I earn 23,000 pounds per year. Um, <clears throat> my partner earns 25,000 pounds per year. Do I have to include all other sources of income like child benefits and DLA for my child? Is it compulsory to include all sources of income after meeting the uh, threshold of 18,600? They are separate. Um, now our friend here has a choice to use 23,000, which is more than the 18,600. 18, and if there are children here involved, I'm sure the children are British children, so she wouldn't even have to consider the children's threshold for maintenance. Okay. Then the husband earns 25,000, which is also more than 18,600. Mm -hmm. So either his husband or both can do the trick. So declare everything. In terms of the main um, um, benefits and what have you, they will ask you, so you just have to declare them. Mm -hmm. but, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't affect no, no, the pressure because affect, you meet it wouldn't affect because she wouldn't have to. If she didn't meet that, then she would have to then, um, her application would have been considered under case law maintenance provision where the person doesn't meet the 18600. But you see, the person came as a spouse of a British citizen so, and wants to extend on that basis the, the next step, uh, the second two and a half. Mm -hmm. So it's always the case that if they're able to meet the 18,600, it's better. And I'm happy that our sister or brother meets that. So no, 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 no room for. Uh, I'm no, going no to hazard. I'm going to hazard a response, and I believe I will be right. Um, <clears throat> Naomi is saying that. Um, what about the two children from our brothers? Their dad doesn't want to get them the inter indefinite leave to remain. Well, I said get evidence that he's divorced. Yes, and if you get that divorce certificate, that's an extension factor. Yes. And you can use that to apply so then for the, them. So then the children will retain their rights. Okay. I'm, I'm getting better. Yes. What you always <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Now, let me take this other one. Uh, we're running out of time, but we'll take two quick ones and we go on. I'm currently on a student visa and I'm working part-time as a support worker. I am a permanent staff. When I finish with the school, can I tell my employer I want to switch to work full-time since my contract is on permanent basis? Is there a possibility that they would sponsor me to work after school since my contract is a permanent one? That possibility depends on the employer. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not a legal point that a lawyer will have to respond to, to give, um, to express an opinion. Okay. Because I don't know the employer and I don't know the employer's circumstance and therefore I cannot conclude that there will be a possibility that this employer will decide A or B. Okay. So I would say it depends on your employer. What you have to do is to pick up the conversation early with the employer so that they know your intentions and you can also assess from their responses whether there will be possibility of giving you um, sponsorship to be able to continue. Mm. Um, if, if that's not going to happen, then it's a case of advising yourself as soon as possible because if you have leave now, then you can easily switch if you have to switch. All right. Now, if I were you, I would ask my colleagues, my friends and loved ones to come join us because very interesting, exciting discussion coming from BWF solicitors on the program, the community and the law. We have the, 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 the chance for you to send in your voice note and that's through our text number 07950422780. And as I tell you and I speak, I have one here. Well, let's listen to this one. Good evening, lawyer and uh, Mr. Ureko. But show me this a quick question, Bio. Um, Madam Fubiri, who not free me, or see him say care home and in the back room, her. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what happened, and or see like see you see a close care home lay down. And she says, say, I affect in Kratana, yeah, dear man, or no. Be him say like, yeah, cancel in Kratana, like, um, if you can see for no true letter or much true, I think say you almost send the email could see the pacrona or yeah, a young man from Ghana and it's in his email. No, it is say I can't attend this. Uh, either so be page you more for to change his contract and now so be call back to Ghana. 
And I don't know, is there any way, is there any other option? I'll bet me I have, apart from getting another job, is there any other option? Thank you. Bye. Unfortunately, it's one of those episodes where it is what it is. Right. Um, the employer is not able to, employer does not have a license to continue employing this person. Mm -hmm. So the sponsorship is um, uh, no longer valid, so to speak. Um, what do you do? Uh, this is a peculiar case. What I would advise our sister to tell the friend to do is to seek, um, to, to approach um, a lawyer, seek specific advice. Okay. Because it's not a case where you can offer open um, advice because it wouldn't really solve the problem. Mm. But, so we, 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 if, if, for example, she speaks to a lawyer, the lawyer would delve into it and offer different options. But on the, on the face of it, unfortunately, the, the sponsorship is um, questioned and she cannot continue to work. Because if the Home Office has written to you, then what they are saying is that your, I don't even know whether the leave has been cancelled. Mm. We don't know the I think content said of the letter. It's about 10 days more to go. 10 days to expire or 10 days. Or maybe they've written to say that, switch. But so sometimes they will advise you. Days, yes. yeah. So if you've been advised to switch, then you know what to do mm. as soon as possible. So the person has 10 days to act. Yes. But the person is asking, is there any way? That other way, as we speak, if the person were to have um, a child who is British child in the UK, then the person can argue that if he, she, I'm sure it's she, if she is asked to remove from the UK, it will affect this British child. But I'm not sure whether this person has that um, um, flexibility in terms of re relying on a Brit her British child. So if there's no British child or EU child in question, then it will be difficult to switch to, let's say, FL FLRFP provision. Again, the person has not spent 20 years in the UK, so they cannot make application based on private life. If the person decides to apply for a student visa, they have to get admission, go back to their country, and apply from there, uh, potentially. Or they can, but 10 days will not even be enough to get admission and to even switch to student here in the U, whilst okay. you are here. All right. So the options. Um, will be based on when you visit a lawyer and the key facts you lay before the lawyer. And the lawyer may be able to explore um, some of these options and see how best. But as we speak and here and now, um, you have to switch. Switch, 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 speak to the lawyer. Um, let's see the, the very last comment there coming from YouTube. Let's see what... It says, what can I say to thank you, BWF solicitors, for the good job you have done for me? May God Almighty bless you all and open a good future. Yao, chumasi ankra. Yao, thank you very much for uh, boldly coming out to say what you have had as a benefit from BWF solicitors. If nothing at all, every Saturday, if nothing at all, every Friday, if nothing at all, every Thursday, we have the lawyers devote their time, minimum of an hour, to explain to us what we need to know, explain to us what is baffling us, and give answers, provide updates and everything. That's what BWF Solicitor does. And listen, you can get it anywhere else. They have invested in the community and they are going with us all throughout. For 30 years, BWF Solicitors have been serving the community. That's why we say they are trusted partners when it comes to the law in the community. BWF Solicitors, 0208-493-7340 or 077-127-61884. Now, I will move us quickly to our next segment after this short interlude, and we'll be going for our quiz. We'll be right back.
Well, 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 uh, it's our time we had our quiz competition. And that is the segment I really would want you to uh, participate in, in the sense that um, it tells me that whatever knowledge we all acquire, we use it and we can bring it back to memory and apply it when we have to. Now, BWF Solicitors has sent me a question and I want to post it. So those of you out there, get ready. Uh, Sabi, I have your extra question, but I'll be leaving it later on. Naomi, beauty, God is good, Ni Yabua, William Adolfo, Idrisu Suleiman, Charles Yabua, George Chumasi, Glorious, Tilly Duma, Nanakwekum, Imeye Dede, Dokasadom, and all the other people I have all, um, I have uh, Kenneth Antobam and um, I, I'm, 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 I'm risking <laughs> getting into trouble. Abna Ativo, you're also there. Uh, thank you all very much. But I'm expecting all of you to participate in the quiz. Now, let's read the question. It's on the screen. Araba and Kuku are Ghanaian citizens. They married in Ghana under the Fanti customary law in 2012. In 2018... They moved to England as lawful residents. In 2020, their marriage broke down irretrievably. They both instructed their respective families to obtain customary divorce for them. This was done by their family elders, pronouncing the marriage dissolved after the necessary customary rights. They obtained a certificate from the Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Kuku has met another woman he wants to marry. Can Kuku use the certificate for the Accra Metropolitan Assembly as evidence of the lawful dissolution of his marriage to Araba in the UK? Now the scenario again, quickly. Araba and Kuku are Ghanaians, citizens. They married under the Fanti customary law in 2012. Six years later, they moved to England as lawful residents. So they are habitually resident here. And they are domiciled. They have been domiciled in the UK from 2018 because it says lawful residence. Okay. Now, in 2020, unfortunately, two years after they've become lawful residents, their marriage broke down irretrievably. They both instructed their respective families to obtain customary divorce for them. This was done by their family elders, pronouncing the marriage dissolved after the necessary customary rights. Now, to make it official, they said, okay, let's go to the um, local assembly or the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, the local authority of the area they live there. They obtained a certificate from there to say that, oh, the families have met and they have decided that the marriage can't continue anymore. Kuku has met another man, woman, sorry, and he wants to have her as the wife. Can he use the certificate from the Accra Metropolitan Assembly as evidence of the lawful dissolution of his marriage to Araba in the UK? One says, yes, he can. Two says, no, he cannot. Now, flow the answers. Let's go. So let's see what you have. You can text uh, 07950422780 or can you put it on the platform and we'll pick it up. First of all, Naomi Bua. No, he cannot. That's number two. Naomi, thank you. Uh, who else is coming? I mentioned names and I'm expecting all of you to come back. Don't run away. Okay. Uh, Imano Sechi, thank you. You have always been with us on YouTube. Thank you very much. Imano says, no, he cannot. That's number two. Okay. Now, who else? Who else is coming? Who else is coming? I have two more minutes to pick up your answers before lawyer explains the answer and draw the curtains down at exactly six o'clock. Abena Ativo, number one. Yes, he can. Abena says, yes, he can. Okay. Um, a minute more. Let's see who else is coming. 0795042278 or put your uh, answer in the comment section on both our YouTube and Facebook pages and we'll pick that one up here. Okay, next one, um, William Sakodie, number two. Willie says he cannot. Cuckoo cannot. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Uh, Daniel Osu says number one. Yes, he can. Danny, yes, he can. And you, Ntiabwaji, no, he cannot. That's number two. No, he cannot. Okay. Um, dun, 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 dun. One more, one more, and I'll go to lawyer. One more, and I'll go to lawyer. Who else is coming? Now, okay, yes, I've, I've got the, the final one I'm looking for. Grace Press, yes, he can. That's number one. So I've got it so split right down in the middle. 
Yes, he can. No, he cannot. No, you can't sit on the fence on this one. <laughs> so, lawyer, let's, let's see. Look at the scenario abroad. What can or cannot be done? Okay. So, um, what we have to understand is that Kuku and um, Araba married under customary law mm -hmm. uh, from their country in their tradition where the marriage was accepted between the families. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, the marriage cannot continue. Right. One, at least one of them, or both of them, live in the UK. Mm -hmm. So all they have done is to send a message to their family that we cannot continue, take their drink back. Who is uh, Aruba will be the one to send the drink, you know? yeah, Araba, yeah, Araba yeah, Araba the drink back. Have taken a, um, then they go to AMA to say, give us something to show that they are not together anymore. Ideally, that's the end of the matter. However, anybody can do that mm -hmm. to the disadvantage of the other person. Mm -hmm. If Araba does that, it will affect Kuku on duly. And if Kuku also does that, it will affect Araba unduly because one of them can hide behind the local assembly and get something. By the time the other person realizes they've been divorced without knowing. Mm -hmm. So it has to be open and bare. So what the law is saying is that they have to go to Ghana court and declare their intention to dissolve the marriage. The court will have to follow the court process to accept to dissolve the marriage. And once the marriage is dissolved, the court will declare an issue dissolution mm -hmm. <clears throat> approved by the court with the court seal. And that is the one the UK court will accept. And that is the one home office will accept. Mm -hmm. The reason is that one of them lives in the UK habitually. And in their case, they've been living in the UK since 2018. So they are living, they are domiciled in the UK. So they cannot just go to AMA and get something to prove that they have, they are not, the marriage is dissolved. They need to go through the court system in Ghana. If they decide not to go through the court system in Ghana, then they have to go through the court system in the, in UK. the UK. It's also allowed okay. because they are living in the UK or one of them at least is living in the UK. They can go through the court system in the UK to get it dissolved. If they don't do that, then they cannot use this as evidence of dissolution so that the other person can be free to remarry. And therefore, the answer is no. The answer is no, that's number two. So those of you who uh, gave me the answer as number one, unfortunately, that's not what the situation is when it comes to the law. Well, it's been very exciting. Um, as usual, I'm going to ask a lawyer to do his one-minute summary. Unfortunately, that's, that is test. <laughs> I'm going to give to the lawyer. Uh, so well, we do his one-minute summary, and uh, we draw the curtains now because we have already run out of time. Lawyer. Thank you very much. So um, viewers and listeners, today we have uh, touched on a very important uh, point. Point number one, if you are in the UK and making an application for settlement, you now have opportunity to apply using the priority service. If you want it within one week, you pay 500 for each applicant. If you want it within one day, one working day or five working days, that's a 500. If you want it within one working day, then you pay 800 pounds for each applicant. You cannot pick and choose where one will go for one week or five days and the other will want one day you all have to make a decision to go this way or that way. There's also opportunity for those abroad to make priority applications. And when you are booking your appointment, you have opportunity to book priority service. Priority service here is the service that the Home Office will render in terms of making the application decision. We also looked at the nugget, and the nugget is very important for one reason. Most people, for whatever reason, their marriage is dissolved or um, um, ended, and they have remarried, and they want to bring their spouse from abroad. If that dis um, the, the, dis the divorce certificate you have is not obtained through the court, Home Office will not accept the divorce, and therefore you, they will say you cannot remarry and bring your new wife or new husband. So let's take note 
of that. Now, on the substantive, today we looked at um, whether you, you can vary the terms of your contract as an employee so that you can go for flexible working pattern. And the answer is yes. We've looked at Section 80F, Section 80G, HI, what you can do when it happens like that. You have to then you have to apply uh, to the employer or make application to the employer to request that you want to change from A to Z. Either you want to change the hours, you want to change the number of days, you want to change the place of work. But you have to make it clear. You also have to specify in the application the impact of that decision on the employer's business and also show how, in your opinion, that effect will be mitigated or addressed by the employer. So it's very important. Once the application is made to the employer, the employer has three months to make a decision and to give you feedback. If they cannot, the employer must speak to you and agree a time frame or extended time frame. If that happens, the employer will either say yes or no based on business needs, impact on the business, impact on finances of the business, and so many other factors. If the employer says no without good reason, then you have opportunity to go to court, for court to make a decision or what we call make an order for reconsideration or make an order that the employer is right or wrong. If that is done, then you have a remedy in court for compensation for what the employer did or what the employer failed to do. So today we have been able to address that point and we have understood that if your circumstances changed, for example, based on family circumstance, based on childbirth, based on childcare, based on disability of your children, based on um, education, studies, whatever it is, you can seek the employer's support to vary your employment contract. This is what we have covered today. In any case, you can speak to ACAS, Google ACAS, A-C-A-S, and you have a lot of information. You can speak to them on your employment matters. Speak to your union. You can also speak to a lawyer in terms of your employment matter. Thank you very much for keeping faith with us once more. BWF solicitors are trusted partners when it comes to the law. And when it comes to BWTV, we bring you quality unsurpassed in the community. We'll be back again same time next week with another edition of the Community and uh, Law. On behalf of my studio uh, director and uh, manager, uh, Professor Ade, who was the uh, employee of the month in December 2022, and also to um, Sheila Ankara, Pat Modudu, uh, the ton of lawyers that we have at BWF Solicitors from everybody to everybody. I want to say thank you so very much for your time with us. Those of you on BW Radio, I know it's, it's gone off and uh, you uh, tuned into the news from Ghana, um, fine. But those of you on Facebook and YouTube, yes, we're having our conclusion and saying our thank yous uh, to all of you. Have a good evening. I love you back. And we will see you again, same time next week. Good evening. Many things. All the many things you've done for me. Well,